Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this video, inshallah, we're going to be talking about destroying a ta'weeth. Now, ta'weeth come in many, many, many different forms. Some of them are more dangerous than others. Some of them are more difficult to dispose of than others. But there's a few basic points that we want to talk about before we begin. First of all, we don't want you to be so scared of them that you're unable to destroy them. Remember that Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ This is only the shaitan who makes you scared of his allies. Don't be scared of them, but be scared of me. I be scared of Allah if you are really believers. At the same time, be aware that keeping a ta'weed like this around you, in your hands, in your pocket for a long period of time is likely to cause you negative effects. It may cause you pain, may cause you some discomfort, it may cause you some problems. Therefore, we recommend you dispose of them as quickly as possible. Now, bearing in mind that this ta'weed, and bear in mind this is only a sample model, a real ta'weed, if this were to be a real one, it could be the magic that if it is taken apart, brings somebody a cure. For that reason, I strongly recommend that you don't send them in the post to people or just leave them lying around. This could be the cure for a person's problems. This could be a cure for an affliction that affected a young child. So take it seriously, uh, treat them with caution, but at the same time, don't be scared of them. Having said that also, make sure that you have performed your Fajr prayer in the Jama'ah, if possible, for the brothers and for the sisters, uh, that you've performed it in the best possible place for you, that you have done your dhikr of the morning and the evening, and so on, and that you have protected yourself by means of the usual means of protection. I also think that uh, in case it's an emergency and you haven't done those things, you should dispose of it anyway, instead of waiting for tomorrow, because really this could be causing somebody a real severe pain, a real severe affliction. So it's not the right thing to do for you to leave that a day or two days or three days. Do the best you can, put your trust in Allah. Now, I do recommend that while opening, handling, touching the ta'weeth, you consistently and regularly recite قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ The whole surah. And قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ um, I'm not going to do that throughout the whole video here because obviously I'm going to be talking to you and explaining to you what I'm doing. But in general, I would expect the person doing this to be re reciting frequently. Now, I just want to talk to you about some of the equipment that I think you should have now. This is example equipment. You can use variations of it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to give you and show you some ideas of some of the things you might want to use. Now, we don't know how many parts of this little package are actually significant. So, what I recommend is that you have some sort of tray. Now, this one's plastic, but ideally you should have metal because uh, these things, when we burn them and things like that, you ideally don't want, you know, you don't want the burning holes in the plastic, which I've done with this one. Uh, ideally, you want something metal, but if you can't find it, the idea is to get rid of it quickly. Tray, you can drop it in. Now what the tray is going to do, is the tray is going to help us, and I'm not going to use it for the purpose of the video, only because uh, of the issue of, of getting a good, good picture for the camera and sort of you being able to see what I'm doing. But generally, you keep everything in the tray, and the idea is that if you drop anything out, any herbs, any weird sort of substances come out of there, they're going to fall in the tray and they're not going to fall all over your house where they might cause a problem for you and for your family. It is safe to dispose of these within the house. I have no issues with that at all, inshallah. Um, I don't recommend disposing of them necessarily, you know, in places that are frequently inhabited by the jinn, like don't go in the bathroom to dispose of it or something like that. Just you know, dispose of it in, that, in the house, but you know, sometimes I tend to do them outside, you know, just outside of the house somewhere where it's easier. 
Uh, but if it's particularly windy or wet, there's nothing wrong with doing it in the house, but just do be careful. You generally keep everything together in one place, the purpose of which we have the, the tray. Uh, in addition to that, we recommend that you have a lighter that will not burn your fingers. I have this one. There are better ones than this. Uh, the long neck ones you use for your barbecue, uh, which have a long twisty neck, they're sometimes quite good. I just picked this one up uh, from home. But um, something, you know, ideally don't want to be using a cigarette lighter because a cigarette lighter, the problem with it is it hurts your finger when you're burning it and it's not very precise for you. You know, you've got the flame going everywhere and you're burning your fingers and stuff like that. So that's not a good idea. I also recommend that during the process of destroying the ta'weev, you wear some gloves. Now, I know what's in this one, so I'm not going to wear gloves because uh, I know what this one is. The reason I tell you to wear gloves is you may well find that in this there are some filthy substances, people's blood, people's urine, feces, all sorts of stuff like that. So really you want to have some gloves on. People talk about the medical gloves you get, you know, the thin ones. Problem with me is they're just, for me, they're just a bit too thin. You know, I want something that's a bit thicker than, than, the, um, than the medical gloves. Washing up gloves like these are, are just fine. As I said, as I know, because what's in this, I, I know what this one is, it's a sample only, then I'm not going to use the gloves just so that you can easily see what it is that I'm doing and I don't have any problems doing it. I also recommend general safety that if you have protective eyewear, you should wear it. That's because these often are contained in metal containers which have shards. When you start pulling them apart, a piece of metal comes up, goes straight in your eye. Again, not a good idea. Do recommend that you have eyewear if you have it. If you don't, put your trust in Allah, but you know, if you have some cheap you know, plastic glasses that just protect your eyes, it's basic safety. We don't do it every day, but you know, at the end of the day, we don't want someone saying, I watched your video and then I blinded myself with a piece of metal that sprung off, went into my eye and I became blind. Uh, I'm telling you now, use protective eyewear, inshallah. Now, this particular ta'weev is not encased in anything. As you can see, it's just wrapped up in string and wax. It's not encased inside of anything. Now, often these ta'weev, when you get them, they are encased. It could be encased in a leather pouch. They could be encased in a metal clasp. And often they're rolled up into tiny, tiny, tiny little, uh, little cylinders, uh, which are sealed with wax at the end. That is why it helps to have a pair of pliers. Um, any pair, any size, any shape, I like them the thinner the better they are at the top because it helps you to get in and pull them out. But these are useful for a number of things. They're good for holding things when you're burning them, so not a bad idea at all to have something that you can hold like this when you're burning it. Uh, likewise, pulling things out that are a little bit dirty, you can use it to pull things out. And also, you can use it to prise open metal containers. Now, it may look like the metal is strong, but to be honest, these things are usually made of aluminium style, tin, things like that. Very light metals. You can literally pull them apart with your hands. So with a bit of heat and a bit of twisting, you should be able to get it open. Now, if it seems like the paper's not coming out, it's usually because it has wax in it. And what you do to get the wax out of the containers is just take your lighter, Get it going and just hold the wax container with your pliers. Just hold that above until the wax starts to melt out. And once the wax melts out, the paper should come out nice and easily, inshallah. This one, as you can see, is already done for us. And this is a lot bigger than they usually are. Um, although I have seen them this big. Uh, the reason we made one this big, and this is not a real ta'weed, we didn't make a real one but this is a, a sample of what a one might look like, is so that it's easy for you to see what is being done, inshallah. And, uh, you know, sometimes you might get the minuscule ones that are very small. It might be hard to show that on camera. So, inshallah, this is uh, an example of one a little bit bigger than they normally are. But you could find it in a bag. You could find it with beads, with little bits of paper in, with, with substances, with people's hair, with all sorts of things. So, we, we're going to try and talk about it in phases. Um, another tool that you might need is a razor blade, or even better than a razor blade, something like this knife. Um, 
I like the ones with disposable blades, but again, when you snap the disposable blades off, they tend to shoot off in people's faces and eyes and things. This is a nice solid one for a craft knife. You can really get in there and cut things out and off. And if you want to get rid of the blade later on, you can just open it using the screw and get rid of the blade. So this is another example of something you can use. Now, as we proceed on, you're going to hear of two or three basic methods. One, we call it the water method. So for that, you need some water. Um, I wouldn't waste Zamzam water on it. Just regular water will be fine. Um, the next method is called the burning method. And for this, you will need a container which can handle the heat, something like this, an old pan. But whatever you use, make sure you don't use it for anything else after that. Um, because at the end of the day, you don't want to be contaminating anything. You should treat these things as being pretty toxic. Uh, so you've got the water method, you've got the burning method. And you've got a combination method of water plus burning. So you've got some alternatives, alternatives there which we'll talk you through. So the first thing you gotta do is get to the point where you've got one of these. And that might mean prizing open the leather, prizing open the metal, uh, and so on. Now, when you do that, you wanna try to get the paper as whole as you can. Now, that can be hard because the paper has been sealed in wax. It might have been there for many, many, many years, maybe even decades. So getting it out might be in a whole piece might be difficult, but do your best and try if any other pieces, just make sure you collect them in your tray. So once you've broken into it and you've got to something like this, so the first thing we're gonna have a look at, what is it? So we can see that it is a piece of paper. You can see that it's surrounded by string and there's a possibility that this string has knots in it. Now I know this string has knots in it because I know that we made it like that, but it's very difficult to see the knots in this string. Even now, it's hard for me, with, even with my naked eye, to be able to see where the knots are. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to get to the piece of paper. So to begin with here, I can see there are a couple of pins in here. Now these pins, uh, the number is significant. I just put two in for an example here, but you need to get these pins out and get them into your, into your tray where you collect everything together. So I'll just bring my my tray back in and just pop the gloves on the side and uh, what I want to do is I want to take out these pins I'm just going to use the uh, the pliers to do that even though they're not difficult to take out Bismillah Bismillah and there I'm left with two pins in my tray I can dispose of those later on in terms of how to dispose of them me I have a preference with the pins I like to break anything that can be broken and then to put it in rukia water. So this can easily be broken, inshallah, by just twisting back and forward with the pliers and some circles and what have you. And there we go, we've broken it. It's not strictly necessary, but I just, I have this thing about wanting to destroy it, wanting to, to visually break up the magic. So I've got rid of one pin. And now it's time to break the other one. I'm just moving it back and forward in the pliers. Personal preference. Pins are there, being kept safe, nice and safe. And now we're down to this piece of paper. Now, I don't know whether this string is significant. It may have just been used to keep the paper in a shape, but it may well be used because of knots. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully take my knife and just break the string off the paper. So cut a bit. Again, I'm going to be reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qul A'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq, and so on. Now, if you ever get to the point where you can't open, it may help to blow after reading the Quran over it. Don't ever blow on filthy substances. If you see blood, urine, um, feces, anything like that, don't blow Quran over that. But in terms of just pieces of paper and string, you can blow Quran over it. Now what you can see here is that you might be struggling to get this off because of the wax. What again you can do, just, just heat up your paper and just use enough of the heat just to 
to, to melt the wax off. And as that starts to come off, that string will now come off much more easily than it did previously. Again, I'm gonna keep all these pieces of string right here in my container to make sure that they don't get lost in case there's anything significant on them relating to the magic. And as, I'm not gonna cut as much as I can, I'm not cutting. As much as I can, I'm trying to just pull pieces off because again, cutting is gonna come later on when we examine the string for knots. And see it's coming off with large lumps of wax. You can also see the paper is still pretty much glued together. Now I'm just gonna put the paper on the side because we've got a job to do. And that is to get rid of any knots. And the way I think you need to usually do this is probably by feeling and looking. So you look all the way along the string and just go along it with your nail. And if you feel anywhere you think there is a knot, like come across one in a moment, so I don't think there's one on there, but I've got a knot here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my blade, I'm gonna take my blade and I'm just gonna cut the knot in half until I'm sure that the knot has been completely broken. And you could use scissors as well. You could cut all the way down the rope until you feel you've got no more knots left in. There are a couple more. I think there should be three in this piece of string. So we just keep looking for them. And if you miss one, it's not an issue. You know, if you miss one, that's the decree of Allah and Allah does what he wants. So you, know, you do your best that you can to find the knot where you can. There's another one there. So again, I'm just going to take my, take my blade and just cut through the knot until I'm happy. So the knot comes apart in my hand and I'm going to keep all this stuff here, keeping all these strings. People might ask about burning it. We'll come to that later on if you're going to use the burning method versus the, the other methods that you could use. Making sure to put my knife away, keep safe at all times, don't put it in front of children and so on. And really, if this was all on a tray and kept, you know, nice on a, on a flat tray or a big piece of paper, and you can keep all the bits and you don't have to worry about there being uh, crumbs and pieces of ta'weev lying around your house. Now here, we can see that this is sealed with wax. Now there's not that much wax on this, so it is quite possible, I should think, for me just to take my knife and just break through the wax. However, if it was a problem, just a couple of seconds with the lighter, drip the wax into the tray, would also get rid of it as well. So what you could do is just take your tray, take your lighter, and you just get it warm enough that the wax drips off. Good idea when you're doing that is to hold it with your, hold it with your pliers so you don't burn your fingers. You just drip the wax off. And once you do that, you'll be able to to take your piece of paper and to be able to get into your piece of paper. So this is a printout of a tatweed, it's not a real one. But it looks very similar to what a real one would look like. So we're just unfolding it, looking for anything coming out. So look how I'm unfolding it over the tray. That's in case anything comes out which may be uh, someone's hair, some more knots, some powder, some dirty stuff. You never know what you can find. Okay, so we open it over the tray, try and keep everything in one place. And then we're left with a ta'weev. This is a real ta'weev, by the way, but uh, not, uh, not the original copy, it's just a printout, so nothing dangerous about this. Uh, it's just a, if you can say, like a, a sample copy. But now we have to ask ourselves, okay, where do we proceed from here? Before we do proceed any further, there is another kind of ta'weed that I haven't shown you today, and that is the ta'weed engraved in metal. So that is when you find something like these words in this writing engraved on a ring. For this, you need to get yourself like a multi-tool or a sanding tool, and just or a file even, and just engrave it, like uh, just uh, file it off, rub it off until it's gone, and then put it in rukia water. So, ta'weed on paper, what do we do with this now? If it was given for the purpose of burning. Now, purpose of burning means someone comes to you and says, this is this ta'weed, the magician told me to burn it every night at Maghrib. Or it says on it, burn every night at Maghrib, for example. 
In this case, you are going to use the water method because you're going to do the opposite of what the magician asked. Likewise, this ta'weed was given to me to put into water. What are you not going to do? You're not going to put it into water. You're going to burn it. If you are just dealing with a regular ta'weed like this one that was in round someone's neck, it's not for burning, it's not for water, it's just around somebody's neck, then I would suggest that you burn it. If you are dealing with a ta'weed written in pink or yellow soluble ink, and you can tell it's soluble ink because it bleeds, it almost looks like you can't even read the letters that are written, it's bled, you know, the ink has bled through the paper, then you need to use the water method. Anything else and you're confused, you don't know what to do, then I would suggest you use the combination method. Okay, so what is the burning method? Okay, so the burning method is extremely simple. Take yourself a container which is suitable to burn something in. And I'll just break this tatweave up into pieces. There's nothing wrong with breaking it up into pieces. I actually quite like the idea of destroying it by breaking it up into pieces. But uh, it's not enough to finish the job, but it's not a bad idea to start with. So here I've got my ta'weed broken into pieces. And I've got my string, or some of my string. I'm going to pop that string in my container. I'm going to pop my ta'weed, the whole of it, but I'm just using a piece to show you here, into my container. And then I'm going to get my lighter, and I'm literally going to burn my ta'weed while reciting over it قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ and again if you're going to handle hot things please do use your please do use your pliers to handle the hot things okay so again you want to burn it so it's completely burnt and you want to burn it inside of the container because what you don't want to do is you don't want to have bits of it going around and you ideally don't want to be breathing it in you know like you want to try to be away from that sort of stuff so I'm just going to set fire to this one goes a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. Try and keep the ashes all in. Now, what you'll be left with is some pieces that haven't quite gone away. So, what we want to do, be careful with the container, it might be hot, is just to make sure the pliers or a stick that we really have gotten rid of everything and uh, I mean because we're in the uh, studio right now I'm not going to burn this like completely like I would outside outside I would burn it and burn it and burn it until there's absolutely nothing at all left but this is a demonstration so at the end of the day just to get a rough idea you can see what's being done inshallah until there's nothing at all left um, and that's your that's your burning method basic method Make sure nothing's left at all, all the rope's gone, all the string's gone, everything is burnt. Make sure you do it safely, make sure you do it and you don't inhale the smoke. Okay. Next comes the water method. Now, for the water method, this is water alone. I'm going to use this tray as an example. I'm going to take my water. I'm going to read the same things over my water. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب 
ومن شر النفاسات في العقاد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس Now, if I was doing this for, for real, I'd probably read over it about probably seven times. Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and Al-Nas, blowing frequently. And I've got my water ready. Okay, what am I going to do with my water? Very simple. I'm going to pour my water into my container. Much as I need, keep some for my ruqya later on. Then I'm going to take my ta'weev that I want to burn, or I want to get rid of my, my water. Take another bit. And I'm just going to quite simply put it in the water. Again, try not to use your hands too much. It could be the water could end up being a bit toxic and nasty. So just use your pliers. And there it goes in the water. Now, if it's soluble ink, like this pink and yellow ink, it'll actually turn the water pink and it'll actually just dissolve completely into the water till there's nothing left. This, as you can see, isn't soluble ink. So you can probably see that the writing still remains just as it was. Um, that's why I would prefer that unless you have to use water only, such as the ta'weed that was given to burn, I would recommend that you use the, after that, use the combi method. The combi method is that you have put it in the water, you then take it out of the water, and you leave it to dry. So you take it out of the water, and you leave it to dry. When you take it out of the water and leave it to dry, it takes a long time to dry. Once it's gone completely dry, you then burn it just like we burnt the other uh, ta'weez earlier on. And in this way, inshallah, you can get rid of the ta'weez very easily. So just to recap, when should you use each one? You must use the burning method alone if the ta'weez was given to put in water. You must use the water method alone if the ta'weez was given to burn. If it is made using soluble ink, you must use water first. If you're in any doubt, use the combi method of water first, followed by burning. And obviously, if you burn the pins and things, they're not going to disappear, but the water should get rid of it. Now, the next question we have is, what do we do with the leftovers? The ashes, you know, the bits of paper, the envelope it was in, the string, the pins. I recommend you take them all, put them all in one place. And what I think you should do is, you go and take it somewhere where people don't go. You know, I don't mean take it to the middle of the wilderness, but you know, just take it to the bottom of your garden, somewhere behind a shed or something. People don't go there. Or, you know, in the middle of the desert somewhere, or just, you know, to the nearest river or something like that. And just throw it in, get rid of it. Bury it in the ground, throw it in the water, dispose of it, disperse it, rip it up into as many pieces as possible, throw it away, get rid of it. And that is basically how we get rid of a ta'weev. Now, I just want to emphasize a couple of things before we do finish. I want to emphasize safety because a lot of people watch this and then they don't use the, their, their common sense to get a lighter, burn their hands, burn the table, burn the house down, or they get a metal casing, flick it open, blind themselves, cut themselves, cause themselves problems. Once again, I want to emphasize, use gloves, Use pliers to hold hot things. Use suitable containers to burn things in. And be very, very careful around fire and flames and so on. Um, other than that, I think that hopefully explains. There are lots of variations. It is difficult to mention every single variation. But generally, uh, this should be a basic introduction for you by which you can hopefully get rid of the majority of the ta'weed that you find. Anything you're not sure of, ask if you can't ask because you can't get an answer quick enough don't leave it with you for days and days use the combi method stick it in the water let it dry and burn it that is the the combination method and at the end of the day it's better you do that and then make a mistake 
than it is for you to later on uh, for you to later on end up having it with you for a long time and getting an affliction because of it. Furthermore, last point I will make, it isn't enough to throw them in the bin. I'm not particularly thrilled about just throwing them in a river either. I think that they need to be disposed of, broken up, broken into pieces and disposed of properly. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.